but I, I'm assuming he is. It's Nick Offerman kind of playing host to all this information about psychedelics in a uh, fake lab. Sorry for the burping. That's just very embarrassing. I should be more professional about these uh, movie reviews. Um, wow. Speaking of professional, that was hot garbage. Hello and welcome to another episode of Blockbuster Reviews. If you don't know what it is, it is where I play a single game of chill marathon and Tetris Effect and try to review a film before the blocks reach the top or until I get 150 lines. Uh, typically, the rule is no spoilers until I get to line 50. I don't think that will matter in this case, but... Um, that's usually the rule, in case you go to other episodes. You'll understand why the spoilers really don't matter in a couple seconds. Alrighty, so Have a Good Trip, Adventures in Psychedelics is a documentary that uh, dropped on Netflix a little while ago. And it is a documentary I was interested in seeing. Um, now, no, this isn't an admission of enjoying psychedelics. Uh, I, I never have. And probably never will because of my own anxieties and so forth. But I did, I did want to see it because it, it includes a lot of uh, uh, comedians and other um, creatives that I like and respect, talking about their experiences with psychedelics. And the documentary goes into explaining psychedelics and their uses and how there's currently a um, movement amongst psychologists and doctors and such to possibly use them to heal different uh, things, including um, PTSD, depression, anxiety, stuff like that. But what was cool about this documentary is it also, you know, it also played on what are bad about psychedelics and how to do them if you are interested, but also was reminding you that they're not for everyone, which I respected. Um, a documentary like that, especially when you see it when you see the trailers for it, it kind of gives you the idea like, oh, you're going to hear some funny fucking stories about when these celebrities did mushrooms and how they're fine. But, you know, they had, they had some of their, uh, they had some detractors, I guess would be the, the best way. Some, uh, some folks saying maybe not the best idea. And, uh, I, you know, I listen to them as well as the people that uh, advocate for them. Um... What was really cool is um, it's kind of fake hosted. I say fake hosted because I don't think he even calls himself by his real name. And I'm not sure if he's playing a character. But I, I'm assuming he is. It's Nick Offerman kind of playing host to all this information about psychedelics in a uh, fake lab. Sorry for the burping. That's just very embarrassing. I should be more professional about these... Uh, movie reviews um wow speaking of professional that was hot garbage but um it includes a lot of interviews with a lot of interesting people i mean the big the, some of the bigger names uh sting and he i think his interview is like right off the top like we go with sting quick we get on the good foot when it comes to sting who uh, i'm not a huge fan of but um his story was uh, very interesting and he actually doubles down with a couple stories um, most people only get uh, one like or one and a half and Sting gets two full stories and uh, a whole lot of time but then again he is Sting and some of these guys you know they just make the yuck yucks and they're comedians um, but the thing is filled with people uh, from people that I know and uh, respect and enjoy their work like Paul Shear um, wow I just I <laughs> just lost someone's name as I was about to say it. It always happens with this particular person, too, and it makes me bad, feel bad. Uh, Rob Corddry, uh, Rob Hubel, uh, Matt Besser, uh, Sarah Silverman, um, uh, Ben Garant, and Tom Lennon from uh, Writing Very Funny Things and Reno 911. Uh, you know, and, and they're telling their stories. And it, what I really liked about it was there were some people, um, uh, a very touching story, which is even is made even more touching by um, uh, the recent passing of Jerry Stiller, 
Uh, ben Stiller tells the story of the one time he took acid and he ended up calling his father. Uh, that's kind of a spoiler. Good thing we're past 50. Um, it's a very funny story. I'm not going to spoil exactly what happens, but it reminds us to appreciate uh, the comedians that we have before they go because Jerry Stiller was in it, but also recently passed away. Um, Fred Willard was in it um, as a character that Mark Maron described, another another um, funny comedian. Uh, Mark Maron was talking about when he was tripping and it wasn't going very well, and then at a Grateful Dead concert, um, the guy said, like he basically looked to a guy and said, hey man, I'm not doing very good, and the guy just says, just hang on, man. Um, and he's like, that was, that was great advice. <laughs> he's like, and I use it to this day. And it's, it was, uh, it was very touching because, uh, very recently, um, I don't know when this is going to go up, but recently from recording time, both Jerry Stiller and Fred Willard have, uh, passed and are no longer with us. So rest in peace to them. And I'm glad you could be in this cool, funny documentary. Um, I will say that because I don't really listen to the Grateful Dead and I never really dug them. Uh, what I heard, it's probably because I didn't participate in uh, psychotropics or psychedelics, um, whatever you want to call it. But there was like a whole couple minutes where all they did was blow that band, man. It was all Grateful Dead and you want to talk about a place to do it. It's at a Grateful Dead concert. Everyone's supportive and and stuff like that and i'm like yeah that's cool i mean i'm sure there's other supportive places and, and grateful dead is all right but you know you don't you, you don't go to a documentary about psychedelic drugs and not expect to hear from grateful dead um they talked to the drummer of grateful dead who just admits that at one point his symbols were melting um and that's when you know you've had a little too much at least i think so um they talked to aesop rocky which was very funny and uh, I don't know the, I don't know the man's music, but I, I appreciate how he tells his story, which involves him getting down with a lady friend. And he then says, like at the end of his interview, clearly, like it's still not for anybody. I would not or everybody. I would not recommend it for everybody, because they, because you know it's it's important to handle your high. I think it was Kevin Smith. Um, I heard on a podcast once said, you know what, man, just handle your high. Don't tell anybody what they can and can't do. Just say, if you are, make sure you can handle yourself. Because that's what is the most important, being responsible for the high. And I might not... Oh, shit, buddy. I am just sucking so hard right now. Um, it's probably because I talk shit about Grateful Dead. And Tetris Effect knows it. And they were like, man, don't you know... That some of our sales go to people who use psychotropic drugs? Fuck. Yeah, I'm gonna lose it right now. Yeah, there's no way to get out of this one. Even all my Tetris 99 work has not prepared me for this, and it's over. So, what did we learn? If you're gonna do psychedelic drugs, be responsible. And they give great tips, and I'm already talking over it, but watch it yourself, get some tips, get some knowledge. Have a good trip, Adventures in Psychedelics. It's on Netflix right now. Peace.